Okay, welcome back to the Twit by Roald Dahl. And so far we have read chapters one through six. And we have a good uh, taste of their character, right? They like playing tricks on each other, that's for sure. They're not the nicest people. Um, they're dirty. They're kind of horrid. So let's see what happens in the future. Remember, as we're reading along, to do and use the good strategies that readers do, right? So making connections, trying to have that movie going on in your head, making connections, you know, to the story, um, to the characters, put yourself in that place. Like, what would I do if I found, you know, a glass eyeball at the bottom of my drink? Oh my goodness. Thank goodness I don't have any friends like that. Um, or maybe you know someone that likes to play a lot of tricks like that. And, you know, and then, you know, you want to make predictions because those are things that we actually naturally do. If you pay attention, if you're watching TV, you constantly do make predictions and you have I wonders. So just take those skills into your reading. OK. All right. Let's get started. The wormy spaghetti. So, oh, dear. I wonder what that means. Right. We can already start with an I wonder. And I'm sure some of you have some good predictions. OK. The wormy spaghetti. The next day, to pay Mr. Twit back for the frog trick, Mrs. Twit sneaked out into the garden and dug up some worms. Hmm. She chose big, long ones and put them in the tin and carried them the tin back into the house under her apron. At one o'clock, she cooked spaghetti for lunch and she mixed the worms in with the spaghetti. But only her husband's plate. The worms didn't show because everything was covered in tomato sauce and sprinkled with cheese. Hey, my spaghetti's moving, cried Mr. Twit, poking around with it with his fork. It's a new kind, Mrs. Twit said, taking a mouthful of her own plate, which of course had no worms. Oh, so I don't know if I would have her cook for me. It's called squiggly spaghetti. It's delicious. Eat it up while it's nice and hot. Mr. Twit started eating, twisting the long tomato-covered strings around his fork and shoveling them into his mouth. Soon, there was a tomato sauce all over his hairy chin. It's not as good as the ordinary kind, he said, taking it with the big, taking with his big mouth, talking with his big mouth full. Sorry. It's too squishy. I find it very tasty, Mrs. Twit said. She was watching from the other end of the table. It gave her great pleasure to watch him eating worms. I find it rather bitter, Mr. Twit said. It's got a distinctly bitter flavor. Buy the other kind next time. Mrs. Twit waited until Mr. Twit had eaten the whole plateful. And then she said, you know, you want to know why your spaghetti was so squishy? Mr. Twit wiped the tomato sauce from his beard with the corner of the tablecloth. Hmm, that's lovely. Why, he said, and why it had a bitter, nasty, bitter taste. Why, he said, because it had worms, cried Mrs. Twit, clapping her hands and stamping her feet on the floor and rocking with a horrible laughter. Mm. So that was interesting. Uh, yeah, I don't know that I would, if they're always playing tricks, I would probably not let them cook my food. Who knows? Okay. Well, the funny walking stick. All right. They don't stop, do they? To pay Mrs. Twit back for the worms in his spaghetti, Mr. Twit thought up a really clever, nasty trick. One night, when the old woman was asleep, he crept out of bed and took her walking stick downstairs to his work shed. There, was, there he stuck a tiny round piece of wood, no thicker than a penny, onto the bottom of the stick. He made the stick longer, but the difference was so small, the next morning, Mrs. Twit couldn't notice it. The following night, Mr. Twit stuck another tiny bit of wood. Every night, he crept downstairs and added an extra tiny thickness of wood to the end of her walking stick. He did it very neatly so that the extra bits looked like part of the old stick. Gradually, but oh so gradually, Mrs. Twit's walking stick was getting longer and longer. Now, when something is growing very slowly, it is impossible to notice it happening. 
You yourself, for example, are actually growing taller every day that goes by, but you wouldn't think it, would you? It's happening so slowly, you can't even notice it from one week to the next. It was the same with Mrs. Twit's walking stick. It was all so slow and gradual that she didn't notice how long it was getting, even when it was halfway up her shoulder. That stick's too long for you, Mr. Twit said to her one day. Why, so it is, Mrs. Twit said, looking at the stick. I've had a feeling there was something wrong, but I couldn't for the life of me think of what it was. There's something wrong, all right, Mr. Twit said, beginning to enjoy himself. What could have happened, Mrs. Twit said, staring at the old walking stick. It must have suddenly have grown longer. Don't be a fool, Mr. Twit said. How can a walking stick possibly grow any longer? It's made of dead wood, isn't it? Dead wood can't grow. Then what on earth happened? cried Mrs. Twit. It's not the stick, it's you, said Mr. Twit, grinning horribly. It's you that's getting shorter. I've been noticing it for some time now. That's not true, cried Mrs. Twit. You're shrinking, woman, said Mr. Twit. It's impossible. Oh, yes, it... Oh, yes, it is. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, yes, it jolly well is, said Mr. Twit. You're shrinking fast. You're shrinking dangerously fast. Why, you might have shrunk at least a foot in the last few days. Never, cried Miss, she cried. Of course you have. Take a look at your stick, you old goat, and see how much you've shrunk in comparison. You got the shrinks. That's what you got. You've got the dreaded shrinks. Mrs. Twit began to feel so trembly she had to sit down. Mm. Mrs. Twit has the shrinks. Okay, let's see. As soon as Mrs. Twit sat down, Mr. Twit pointed at her and shouted, There you are. You're sitting in your old chair. You've shrunk so much feet. Your feet aren't even touching the ground. Mrs. Twit looked down at her feet, and by golly, the man was right. Her feet were not touching the ground. Oh, no. <laughs> Mr. Twit, you see, had been just as clever with the chair as he'd been with the walking stick. Every night when he had gone downstairs and stuck a little bit of extra on the stick, he had gone and done the same to the four legs of Mrs. Twit's chair. Just look at you sitting in your same old chair, he cried, and you shrunk so much, your feet are dancing in the air. Mrs. Twit went white with fear. You've got the shrinks, cried Mr. Twit, pointing his finger at her like a pistol. You've got them badly. You've got the most terrible case of the shrinks I've ever seen. Mrs. Twit became so frightened that she began to dribble. But Mr. Twit, still remembering the worms in his spaghetti, did not feel sorry for her at all. I suppose you know what happens to you when you get the shrinks, he said. What? gasped Mrs. Twit. What happens? Your head shrinks into your neck and your neck shrinks into your body, and your body shrinks into your legs, and your legs shrink into your feet, and in the end, there's nothing left except a pair of shoes and a bundle of old clothes. I can't bear it, cried Mrs. Twit. It's a terrible disease, said Mr. Twit, the worst in the world. How long do I've got, cried Mrs. Twit. How long before I finish up as a bundle of old clothes and a pair of shoes? Mr. Twit put on a very solemn face. At the rate that you're going, he said, shaking his head sadly. I'd say more than, not more than 10 or 11 days. But isn't there anything we can do, cried Mrs. Twit. There's only one cure for the shrinks, said Mr. Twit. Tell me, she cried. Oh, tell me quickly. We'll have to hurry, said Mr. Twit. I'm ready. I'll hurry. I'll do anything you say, cried Mrs. Twit. You won't last long if you don't, Mr. Twit, giving her another grisly grin. What must I do? cried Mrs. Twit, clutching her cheeks. You've got to be stretched, said Mr. Twit. So, hmm, I wonder what that means. I wonder if she will catch on before 
she gets stretched. So let's, you know, we will, that's the end of these three chapters. So think about what your predictions are for the next few chapters. Think what will happen. You know, can you connect to these characters? Do you know any tricksters like that? How would you feel if that was you? So those are some of the things to think about. We will come together again soon. And between now and then, just keep on reading. Have a great day and thanks for listening.